further. So explain why an operating system needs to use scheduling algorithm. So scheduling is basically an algorithm that defines that uh, how the multitasking will happen. Multitasking is only enabled using scheduling. Scheduling means that uh, all the loaded programs which are kept in the memory uh, will require their turn to be executed because the processor can only process one program at a time. One process can go to the uh, processor for execution. So scheduling actually defines and carries out this responsibility of sending a program to the processor and bringing it back if it is not completed even so that all the programs could be run one after the other so that we have an illusion that all the programs are being executed together. So without scheduling, multitasking will never be uh, possible. So explain why operating system needs to use scheduling algorithm for multitasking. Uh, for multiple programs to share the processor. Uh, so that a schedule to execute high priority programs first. So that a fair execution time could be planned for all loaded jobs. What is meant by an interrupt? As you would have already been um, learning about interrupts since O levels. So interrupt is a signal from a hardware or software source that requires the attention of microprocessor. Microprocessor, okay? A computer system uses multi-programming, okay? The low-level scheduler decides which process will get next to the processor. So actually you have to uh, know that there are three types of schedulers, high level, low level, and medium level. High level schedulers, when the job gets into the ready queue, they actually put the job in the, they load in the RAM and then put the job in the ready queue. And if the job is moving between ready queue and running queue and held queue, waiting queue, in that case, this is the duty of low level scheduler to run these jobs between these three states. And at any, any point, if the job that is loaded is not being executed, it is not meant for being executed as sometimes what we do when we just load the job and leave it. So in that case, that job is neither doing any IO or anything. So that this is just wasting the memory. But sometimes we need to have more space in the RAM so that uh, we could load another program but the lamb is low on memory. So in that case, medium level scheduler, what it does, it just points out and sees if any job that is not being used by the user and it is loaded in the RAM means it is having most idle time. So that job will be then offloaded to the virtual memory over the hard disk. So that is the job of medium level scheduler. So high level scheduler loads the job, keeps in the ready queue 
and low level scheduler is responsible for all the scheduling and moving the job between the states and medium level scheduler is responsible for offloading the job to the virtual memory as we have not offloaded it we have not closed the job yet and to bring them back so they are talking about the low level scheduler decides which process get next to the user oh, sorry the processor one algorithm would be round robin round robin means everyone would have the same amount of time and they will go in turns if there are four people four jobs they will be given one by four time if there are 10 people 10 jobs they will be given one over 10 time okay so that is round robin no matter how large how small the job is every job will get equal amount of time so eventually those jobs which are smaller in size will get out of the system and their time will be allocated equally among the rest of the jobs so that is round robin one after the other same time one job could be uh, one algorithm could be round robin which means every process gets use of the processor in sequence for a fixed amount of time that is time slice the amount of time that is given to each job in round robin is called time slice for a round robin algorithm five processes are currently five processes are currently loaded and get uh, the use of the processor in the sequence okay the sequence you have to remember job 21 then job s then job pt then job 32 then job 42 and then return to job 21 so this is a round robin thing okay now process job 32 there we go has just completed its time slice the following paragraph describes what happens next complete the paragraph by inserting the missing processes so interrupt received from the low level scheduler save all the registers content for job 32 because it has to get out copy the save registers for then after 32 we have what job 42 to the cpu the processor will now uh, will now will now process job 42 okay so after 32 job 42 will be executed now identify four layers of tcp ip protocol the first one is application layer second one is transport layer third one is internet layer or network layer Fourth one is data link layer. So application transport, internet or network and data link layer. The DCPLV protocol suit is responsible for transmitting data across the internet using packet switching. Explain why packet switching is used when sending data across the network. Uh, packets make best use of the network by sharing the bandwidth packets may use different routes for the most efficient uh, routes, routing. Okay, each packet requires a header. Describe the purpose of the packet header. Packet header has uh, sender and receiver's IPs and their sequence number and hop number and whatnot. Okay, so, uh, it has data about the packet, like origination IP address, destination IP address, uh, sequence number, pop number, and whatnot. 
identify three items that should be contained in the uh, that uh, identify three items that should be contained in a packet header okay i have actually put the question wrong basically this is what we needed to put here these are the items describe the purpose of header to to store data about packet uh so that packet could route to required destination efficiently so that packet does not get to straight okay so this is origination ip destination ip sequence number hop number uh whatever might have some sort of checksum as well digital certificates are used in internet communication a certificate a certification authority is responsible for using a digital certificate identify two data items present in the digital certificate we have just done it so hashing algorithm uh digest message digest okay the following paragraph describes how a digital signature is produced complete the paragraph by inserting an appropriate term in each uh this is a dash algorithm a hashing algorithm is used to generate a message digest from the plain text the message digest is encrypted with the sender's private key the following incomplete table shows description relating to computer architecture complete the table by inserting the appropriate term there are several processors uh if you if you do remember there are different types of architecture that we have studied in the part it was misd sisd things if you do remember the following incomplete table shows description related to computer architecture it's not just one human architecture it is different architecture as well complete the table by inserting the appropriate term there are several processor each processor executes different sets of instruction on one set of data at a time this is multiple instructions multiple instructions mean multiple program and one data at a time means single data the processor has several alus uh each alu executes the same set of instruction on different sets of data at the same time so single instruction multiple data okay so this is your graphic cards and all there is only one processor the processor executes one set of instruction single instruction single data 
There are several processor. Each processor executes a different set of instruction. Each is, each processor operates on different sets of data. So this is our nowadays computer. Multiple instructions, multiple data. Multiple instructions means multiple programs. Multiple data means every program is using their own data. It's the three characteristics of massively parallel computer. These are super computers. They have got enormous number of processors, and then those processors are being networked together and all. Okay, so a large number of processors. It is a network of processors, network infrastructure is required to wire processors together. This is a coordinated computing means the work is decided among all the divided among all the processors and they do their own work. So that's it for this paper, which is uh, October, November 19, speed 3.1. So thank you.